Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be programming a 1999 GMC Sierra and we are going to be using some older equipment today in combination with some new stuff. So we have the Tech 2. That's a tool that was designed to diagnose and program this truck back in the day. Unfortunately, when SPS2 came out, I think October of 2020 is when the, uh, the rollover date was, we lost some functionality with Tech 2. Um, and I think in the last six months, they've added that functionality back in to SPS2. So today I'm gonna to show you how to use the Tech 2 as a pass-through device with SPS2. So the first thing we need to do is log into our account. If you don't have a subscription, you'll have to buy a subscription. If you have not used programming before, then you'll have to install TechLine Connect, uh, which it'll go through the steps automatically for you. So let me get logged in real quick. We're gonna launch TechLine Connect. We're gonna hope it works because this is kind of like a 50-50 uh, shot here on what day of the week TechLine Connect is going to uh, malfunction and not work for us. Now, while this is loading, there's two ways that we can do programming with the Tech2. Um, the old way is Tech2 Remote, and that's where we would pull the calibration from the vehicle, calibration information. We would connect our Tech2 to the laptop. We'll put the programming files onto the Tech2, plug the Tech2 back in, and then we'll continue that programming event on the vehicle. I haven't used it that way with SPS2. I have used it as a pass-through device. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, this information here, we're gonna have to reselect anything that we select here. So I'm just gonna close this out. If, if we punch all this in and hit select, it's gonna ask us for a J box and we're not using a J box. So I'm just gonna close that. It did leave us on the screen for SPS2. Normally, if you identify the vehicle, it may take you up to this vehicle screen up here, um, which it's not going to because we don't have a vehicle selected. So if it takes you somewhere else, SPS2 button over here on the side will take you to this screen. Now it says diagnostic tool ready J2534. We don't even have a J2534 tool plugged in. So we're gonna go to manual select tool. We're gonna select uh, Tech2 legacy pass through and we're just gonna go reprogram. Um, I'm just doing this as a demonstration. This vehicle got a new ABS module. It does not require programming through SPS2, so I can't use that as a demonstration, but we are gonna go to just reprogram. We'll just check to see if there's updates for this ECM, which I know there is. Uh, there's some, some idle concerns and some other stuff, so we probably need to do those updates. Anyways, we're gonna hit submit. Now, it's gonna try and communicate to the vehicle and it couldn't. So um, what, what's kind of silly is the instructions we need are on the next screen. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my Tech 2. And once the logo screen comes up, I'm gonna leave it on that screen. We're not gonna hit the enter button to continue into the Tech 2. So let me show you what that screen looks like. So this is the Tech 2 logo screen. It's booted up. Um, it says we have the candy module attached, which we probably don't need for this vehicle. That is for can enabled vehicles hit enter to continue. I'm not gonna hit anything. I'm just gonna leave it on that screen. So let's hit submit again. It's gonna talk to the tool. The screen flashed a couple times. Okay, before we go any further, the instructions we need are on this screen. But unfortunately, if you have your Tech 2 off or if you have your Tech 2 deeper into the system, you have a hard time getting to the screen. So we're gonna turn the ignition off. We're gonna fully charge the battery, which I have a maintainer connected. We're gonna turn the ignition on. We're gonna connect the Tech 2, connect the serial cable from here to the computer, which is already done because we've gotten past that last screen. We're gonna switch the Tech 2 on and wait for the Tech 2 start screen. So they call it a start screen, uh, I call it the logo screen. After programming, the technician will be given the opportunity to clear diagnostic trouble codes. So it gives us the instructions we need to use this as a pass-through. So I have to make this vehicle selection. Um, Sometimes these older ones, the VIN doesn't work or you can't enter the VIN here. So let's just go to vehicle make. This is a GMC Sierra. It's a 1999. And this is the new body style. Uh, or at least it should be. That's uh, the first year of this truck with the, the 5.3. So it's reading our vehicle. 
it did pull our VIN number. We selected reprogram. If you were doing something different, if you were replacing a module, you could change that now. Let's hit next. And once it starts programming, I'll show you what the Tech 2 looks like during the programming process. So powertrain, programming, normal. We'll hit next. What it's gonna do is it's gonna pull information from the vehicle, see what the current calibration is in the vehicle. Use a VIN slot, yep, that's okay. So here we are, operating system. Our calibration is 372, which is one calibration behind. So we do have some uh, changes here for IAC and new software to engage AC during engine crank to prevent AC belt damage. I don't know, normally you don't have the AC on during crank, so that's kind of a weird update. Uh, so yeah, there's some other codes in here. So let's go ahead and, oh, we have one here. We have a checkbox that is not green. So there's a transmission option here and it does not have a checkbox in it. We have to make this selection before we can go further. So there's two options normally, sometimes three, and it's normally tied to its service bulletin or customer concern. So this one here, new calibration to correct harsh one, two upshift and driveline growl may affect fuel. So this is typically, if you have a customer that's concerned with a specific item, there'll be a calibration to fix it, but you sacrifice fuel mileage or you sacrifice power. Uh, let's see what the other one is. Okay, the other one is still correcting the harsh up, upshift, but it's not correcting the driveline growl. So that's the one we're gonna go with. Um, we won't worry about the uh, growl because the customer didn't complain about that. We're gonna hit the next button. It's gonna show us a list of our current calibrations and our new calibrations. Take a screenshot of that or save it to a PDF. We're going to start programming. So it is now downloading that information from the server. It's going to load it through the Tech 2. It's not gonna put it on the Tech 2. It's gonna load it directly through the Tech 2 to the vehicle. And it's gonna program it just like we had the J-Box hooked up or even the factory MDI2 hooked up. Um, it's gonna program it as a pass-through device. We can see that the programming has started. Now, what I've noticed with the Tech 2 is the estimated time is normally really high and then it comes down pretty rapidly. So it says seven minutes left, but the progress bar is moving along quite nicely. I'll show you what the Tech 2 looks like during this process. So we just have some bars moving across the screen. Not a whole lot to see. Um, not even literally a status bar, or progress bar. It's just basically telling us that we have some sort of communication going on. So I'm just gonna let this uh, wrap itself up. We got a couple minutes left and then I'll bring you guys back on. So when you're done, the Tech 2 just goes back to the logo screen or the start screen. Um, at, the, at this point, the programming is done. We can disconnect this from the computer. Uh, we could use a computer to clear codes, but I need to set up the ABS module anyway. So we're just gonna use this guy to do that process. So my Tech 2, I just have an ethernet cord plugged into the RJ45 jack. and comes over here to the serial adapter. My computer does have a DB9 serial port on the back of it. If you don't, you'll have to use a uh, USB to serial adapter. There's certain ones that work good, I guess. Um, my computer has a serial port, so I haven't really had to mess with that. Okay, so that's it. I hope that answers any questions you guys had on programming these older Chevys with the Tech 2 as a pass-through device. Um, OEM software, you'll have to pay a VIN subscription for this vehicle. It's good for a couple of years. You need to have the Tech 2. You need to have the interface cable from the Tech 2. Um, I had to get a replacement because I couldn't find mine. And it was like 20 bucks on eBay. And of course, after I bought it, I found my cable. So now I have two cables, but that's the process. Um, most of the older class two stuff may benefit from programming with the Tech 2, especially some of the trailblazers that if you're using uh, aftermarket devices, you have to, uh, you have to unplug a bunch of stuff. You have a higher risk of failure on those vehicles. So now that this is working and I know it works, pretty much all the class two stuff, 05 and down, I'm gonna be using the Tech 2. Uh, Trailblazer, I don't know if they, uh, if they went CAN enabled, you know, if for the 06 to 08 models. Um, 
but either way, if the Tech 2 will do it, I may just use the Tech 2 on all the Trailblazers just to prevent issues from happening because those are pretty common to brick modules. Questions or comments, put those down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.